Hey there, Segudo golfers, Tom Segudo here. And in this episode, we're gonna be going through eight of the best Arnold Palmer golf swing tips that you need to know right now. These tips are so good, you're gonna be hitting the ball a lot more crispy, consistent, and powerful. I can't contain my excitement right now, so let's just get started with tip number one. This tip is fantastic for eliminating fat shots from your golf game and it has to deal with the movement of the lower body in the downswing. In the downswing, Palmer tells us to move the legs toward the target in the downswing to keep the club from bottoming out behind the golf ball. A lot of you struggle with hitting fat shots and doing this through impact, where you fall back and have this flip-like finish. This is a great way to eliminate having that problem. So Palmer suggests doing this. When you get to the top of your backswing, move your lead hip toward the target, or in his case, move the legs toward the target. Either way, you're going to accomplish the same thing. The first move in the downswing should be to move your weight toward the target. And this is gonna get your chest over the golf ball. When you get your chest over the golf ball near into impact, it's almost impossible for you to fall back and flip, which causes the fat shot. The feeling I like for you to use here is to start the downswing, weight moving forward, driving the legs toward the target, or even driving the lead hip toward the target. And what this will do, in conjunction with keeping your chest over the ball, is prevent you from hitting behind it. And you'll find that when coming into impact, you'll have about 90% of your weight on your front leg. That's really gonna drive the club down and through the golf ball, giving you some serious compression. With this tip, legs driving toward the target, keeping your chest over the ball as you hit it, a great feeling for you if you're one of those flip and fall back type of people is to imagine your head is in front of the golf ball when you're hitting it. It's a feel, but if you're used to having your head back and flip falling back, getting your head in front of the ball, feeling wise, keeps you over the ball in the downswing, keeps the weight forward going to the target. That was beautiful. This tip is an Arnold Palmer essential, and by essential I mean after the grip, this was the most important tip for him, and it's about keeping the head still. You hear a lot of stuff in instruction today about how you shouldn't keep your head still, but that is such a farce. The head is simply a reflection of how the shoulders are turning, and if you want to have clean contact consistently, you need this club to come into the ground at the same spot every single time. Keeping your head still tells the shoulders to turn in a circle, and when you turn your shoulders in a circle, the club traces the same path every single time, which is the big key for consistent contact. You need to focus on keeping a steady head. What I think you shouldn't do is lock your head in place. You do have some wiggle room to turn your head a little bit, but you should really focus on making sure your head stays in the same box or circle here as you turn your shoulders. This will get the shoulders turning properly around your spine, and it will also get you mashing the ball in the center of the club face. A great way to rehearse this is take your head, place it against the wall or an object, and just focus on turning your shoulders without your head moving off of an object. What this will do is keep the head still as you turn your shoulders. It's precisely the feeling you need in the backswing and the downswing to keep your head in place for clean, solid contact. After rehearsing this, let's hit a golf shot. Focus on turning your shoulders in a circle, keeping your head steady. Turning those shoulders in a circle, head steady. One of the biggest keys for consistent, clean contact. The king is awesome. Oh, that felt good. Really crispy. This tip is one of my favorite Arnold Palmer tips. It deals with extending the club down the impact zone for accuracy. What he means by this is to avoid rolling over your hands aggressively after impact. The reason why you don't want to roll your hands aggressively after impact is because it causes the club face to rotate excessively. The club face determines the start direction of the golf ball. So if you're rotating this consciously hard through impact, there is very little consistency for you because you're always timing up the angle of the club face at impact. And when you're trying to do that at one millisecond in time, it's darn near impossible. So Arnold Palmer suggests, and I agree with him wholeheartedly, that if you can keep the club face square longer through the impact area, almost like you're holding off the release, you're gonna have that club face pointing at the target longer and your shots are going to start online all day long. I can personally attest to this because I used to be a hard roller of the club face thinking this gave me more power. It actually just gave me more inconsistency, no power. When I started holding it off, 
I was hitting my target all day long and plenty of compression because that trail hand is supporting hard at impact. To get this feeling, I really want you to try holding off the release. What I mean by that is simply don't roll your hands after impact or at the golf ball, that aggressive rolling situation. You've got a wedge in the trail hand right here formed by the wrist and the arm. You want to maintain that wedge at impact and the way through. This does two things. One, make sure your hands are ahead of the golf ball at impact, compression. Two, keeps the club face square or longer when you hold this angle on the way through. Accuracy, compression, accuracy. It's a two for, two for one. So why not do it? Good way to practice this is to start off by hitting some short shots and just focusing on maintaining the wedge in your trail hand right here on the way through. If you throw it away like this, you've rolled or released or flipped, no, 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 but you wanna have this on the way through. So keep the wedge and you'll have greener pastures ahead. Great place to start. Then build it up into a fuller swing, maintain the wedge, keep holding off the release, club face stays square, you'll be accurate all day long. That ball will always start on your intended target line. One little side note for this tip if it helps you, feel like your trail hand is pointing at the target longer through impact, almost like your trail palm right here is pointing at the target all the way through the impact zone. That will keep the club face square or longer the longer you keep that palm pointing at your target. It's perhaps one of the reasons Arnold Palmer had such a unique finish. He may, be, may have been a golfer who was really tempted to roll over the hands, so he finished with that high arm like this type of follow through. It's definitely an indicator that somebody holds off is when you finish really insanely like he does. Just something to keep in mind, one of the things that helps him to be really accurate. I think it's a great tip for the amateur golfer today. Do you want to blast the driver longer and farther than ever? Well, duh, we all do want to do that. Arnold Palmer's got a great tip for us here. He talks about the notion of extending your body on tee shots for maximum distance. This is something a lot of you need in your golf swing to hit the driver a ton further. And also, when it relates to stack and tilt, it's one of those things that you need to launch a driver higher and farther. So it's a win-win for all of us. Palmer talks about extension in the backswing and on the downswing. In the golf swing, the spine naturally should extend. You need extension, it's your best friend. What it does is it allows you to keep your head in place. If you did not extend, your shoulders would turn like this. Extension, on the other hand, does this. It raises your body up, keeps your head in place because if I just tilted and turned without extending, my head would go down like this. So extension, as a side note, keeps your head in place in the backswing but it also loads up a ton of power for you. Imagine an ax chopper. When they're going to chop or split wood, extension, and then they go into flexing, and it's a power move. That's why they chop wood like that. It's insane power coming to the golf ball. Boom! So on the backswing, we extend our body. So you might actually raise up. We extend. This happens if you keep your head in place. Extend. And on a downswing, we also go into that flexing and then extending again. And the faster you can do that, the more power you'll have. Most amateur golfers have minimal amounts of extension. But what you should strive for is this. When you get to impact, you will see a curve in your trail side like this, almost like a reverse K position. This curve is part of that extending move. As the downswing begins, you've got a straight trail side. As you start, it begins curving, and then this side gets straight, the lead side, and then you extend upward, unlocking all that power. It's super speed. Extend and extend. So we extend, we split the wood, and we extend upward again. There are two ways to feel this tip. First thing, keep your head in place as you swing. It naturally gets you extending on the backswing, so no dipping of your head, no going over this way. You keep your head in an imaginary circle right here steady throughout the backswing. That automatically extends your spine. It's a natural motion. And then on the downswing, the way we unlock that extension is we spring off of the ground. So you're loading up pressure in the front leg, and what you need to do is tuck your butt under aggressively so you got your butt right here. It's always gonna be there. <laughs> you want it to protrude toward the target. It gets you almost springing up, and there's a ton of speed in that motion. That is the move of 
extension and going upward. It might feel like you're jumping up in the air. Some golfers on TV end up swinging on their, off their toes. That's why that happens, extension, it's power. So we've got backswing, head in place, downswing, tuck the butt under, which causes a chain reaction of all that power going through the ball. Mash city, let's hit one. Extend and then tuck the butt under aggressively in the downswing. You will really love the way you hit this ball. When you finish, you should see a curve in your back and you should feel like you're a little bit taller, like you've extended upward and you've just released everything out of that flex position into extension. You have no longer restricted your body. If you finish like this, all compressed, like I see a lot of golfers today, you have not extended. Finish extended upward, fully released out of your golf swing position. Palmer also mentions that this tip will maximize your distance off the tee. What he means by this is he says when you extend, you flatten the club coming into the impact zone for maximum distance. Well, you need this move. You'll never hit the driver far if you're chopping over it like this. You need the club to do the opposite. It needs a shallow and then hit. As you extend on the backswing, you start the downswing, you start tucking your butt under. It's shallowing the golf club here. And then you keep tuck, tucking, tucking, tucking. Boom, explosion, and release through the ball. Your body releases beautifully through the ball with maximum speed. So you get that butt tucking under, you be mashing it for miles. This tip is really a great one, one of my favorites too. Keep it compact for control. Keep the golf swing compact, shorter for more control. You're not going to lose power when you do this. You actually pick up some power because you'll be more consistent. But the idea is getting away from the long and loose golf swing that breaks down. Because the longer you swing, if you have a breakdown, you have to now coordinate getting this club into a position to hit. It's very difficult to do, especially when you go so far back, you have a little bit of a breakdown here. Now you've got to get the club in a position that takes a lot of effort and time. It's a lot simpler to avoid doing extra motions. So Arnold Palmer is telling us here, keep it compact, keep it simple. How do we do that? You got to keep a connection between your upper arms and your sides throughout the golf swing. Once you got that gorilla glued in there, you should feel like a penguin. Like these arms are literally connected to your shoulders and the only driver of your golf swing is those shoulders. If you keep that connection, you have no choice but to swing compact. So you'll stop over swinging and because it's more compact and you're not breaking down anything, you'll return the club to the same spot every single time. Consistently clean impact. You want to make sure throughout the golf swing that this connection is maintained. So when you get to the top of your back swing, you see this connection here really glued in there. Also the upper left arm against your chest will remain connected as well. So both arms, lead arm and trail arm connected against your side. Keep it compact and that will keep it crispy. Keep it compact, keep it crispy. All right, glue them in there, Gorilla Glue, keep it compact, keep it crispy. Keep it compact, keep it crispy. This one is one of the King's best tips. Point your lead shoulder at the ball. In the golf swing, if you want to have clean contact, you've got to maintain your body's relationship to the golf ball. You establish this relationship to the ball in your posture. Hello, ball, how are you doing? Now, for clean contact and to have a perfect golf swing, simply point the lead shoulder at the golf ball. Gets the lead shoulder turning down 90 degrees to your spine. Relationship to ball maintained. This is gonna fix a ton of golf swings out there because a lot of you are in the habit of turning level this way. The club is going to follow how the shoulders turn. So if you've got a golf swing problem, it can likely be traced back to how your shoulders are turning. If I turn my shoulders level, look what happens with the club. Leveled out of my relationship with the ball, no more relationship, no longer friends with the golf ball. Now it's gonna be that good old hack over and chop day. If I have a relationship with the ball, however, look what it does to my swing. Point the lead shoulder at the ball, boom, perfect. Lead arm on my shoulder line, I'm still connected here, arms behind the trail shoulder. Perfect backswing position. And you know how much thought it required? Zero. So if you wanna be like the king, and if you wanna be a ball striking king and master, you've gotta point the lead shoulder at the ball in the backswing, pitching wedge through driver, every club in the bag you do this with because you need that relationship to hit it crispy clean. Here we go, point the lead shoulder at the ball. In fact, I love this tip. I go back to it all the time. Oh, that felt so good. If you want to hit it crispy, you want to be a ball striking king, 
that's the tip for you. This next tip is extremely important for setting up your golf swing for success. Did you know you can make or break your golf swing in the first three feet? The takeaway right here, from the ball to here, you can literally make or break your golf swing. This is where most golf swing failures happen. And so a lot of golfers get active hands in the first part of the swing. They roll their hands, club gets stuck behind them, or they disconnect their arms from their body, they take the wrists off the ball early. Either way you shake it, it's causing a problem right off the ball. Early hand action leads to compensations later in the swing. If you roll, you go up, you chop. That's just one example. There are many millions of examples of problems caused from a faulty takeaway. If you want to have a synced up golf swing and a successful golf swing, we all do, you should take the club back with zero wrist action in the first part of the takeaway. So no breaking of the wrists, no side rotating of the hands, none of this, no side bending. It's going to be nothing but this whole unit here, connection, arms through the hands, everything moving back, perfectly quiet for the first foot. I'm going to re-emphasize this though. You probably want to feel like you're doing this for about three feet because you're used to using so much hands early on. If you can keep this unit together in the first few feet, it automatically pulls the shoulders, body, hips, arms around together. Everything's working as a unit, which gets you to the top of the backswing in a beautiful position. Golf swing and sink is much easier to coordinate, easier to hit the ball clean, very consistent. Focus on doing this. Take the club back, very quiet, no hand action in the first three feet. That will automatically set you up for a perfect golf swing. Great way to think about this is to imagine we're having extremely quiet hands. Nothing going on here with the hands. No side bend, no wrist action, nothing, nada, zero. If you can keep it quiet, you'll see an increase in consistency with your ball striking and you'll have much cleaner golf shots. So keep it quiet, keep the club face from doing anything, going back. One little thing I like to feel when I do this, it's almost as if my lead hand in the takeaway the back of the lead hand points at the golf ball. This tells me I've done it right. The back of the lead hand points at the golf ball. I have not rotated my hands. If that lead hand points at the sky, I've rotated my hands. So it should point down at the ball in the first three feet, keeping the hands quiet longer. And remember, it's only three feet. Don't worry about it after that point. Let the swing take care of itself after that. As Arnold Palmer said in this tip, if you can master that first foot of the swing, the rest of the swing will take care of itself. This tip is extremely important if you want to have consistent ball striking, and it's one of my favorites. The whole idea is stay over the ball in the golf swing. If you keep your body over the golf ball, you've got a really good chance to hit it clean because there's no shifting or swaying, no lateral motion. If you keep your body turning in a circle, you'll return the club to the same spot every time. That's the key ingredient. Number one fundamental in golf, hit the ball in the same spot every single time, same point of contact. So if I can turn my shoulders in a circle, club traces the same path, feeling is keeping my chest over the golf ball, you will hit it clean all day long. Arnold Palmer stresses this, as you take the club back, do not shift your weight laterally either direction. You want to keep yourself relatively centered over the ball. So I like to start off with about 55% of my weight on my front side and allow my body to rotate as I turn my chest. I'm pivoting my legs. My shoulder's turning down, everything's working in harmony with each other. It's when we start getting in the habit of keeping our legs locked that we have to get into swaying because as you lock the legs, your body's restricted from turning and as you're restricted from turning, your body doesn't like that so it says, well, time to do something lateral. We need to get out of the habit of having lateral motion in the back swing so we can stay centered over the golf ball. Allow to turn, keep your chest over the ball. My feeling is that the middle of my chest is pointing at the ball throughout the golf swing. So this point right here is always pointing down at the golf ball. It nearly mirrors the tip of pointing the lead shoulder at the ball, about the same concept. Keep your chest pointed at the ball throughout the golf swing and you will always hit it clean. That felt good. All right, we got a bonus tip for you here. The king gave us this one. When you execute the shoulder turn in the golf swing, imagine that you've got a barber pole running straight through your head. It's kind of like the turn in a barrel concept, but it echoes the tip of keeping your body turning in a circle instead of doing lateral motion in the backswing. If you can turn with this barber pole imagined through your body, keeping your body over the ball, you will always turn in a circle and you'll even get in a perfect turning position. As you can see, the trail hip will get higher 
than the lead hip in the backswing if I turn properly. And all the legends did that. You saw that in these classic photos, even in the tip picture there, you can see the trail hip higher than the lead hip. And you can see the left knee or the lead knee going down, placing pressure on the front side. That's what you want to see in your golf swing. None of this loading up and going this way stuff. That gets you in trouble, pulls you off of the golf ball. You've lost your relationship with the ball. Now you've got to shift back to hit it. So if you can turn in a barber pole, imagine a pole running straight through your head down to the middle here of your feet, everything's going to work back together nice and synced up. And you'll have one point of contact because you don't have to coordinate the shifting or lateral motion of doing this in your golf swing, which takes a ton of timing. And if you're not practicing, it gets away from you real quick. This swing is really easy to execute because you could easily say to yourself, turn in a circle, and you don't have to worry about practicing it too often because it's so simple. Turn in a circle, just turn in a circle. Weights forward, start with my weight slightly forward in the setup, turn around this barber pole. My chest is the driver of the swing. Connected to my chest is my arms, and the club is connected to my arms. Everything working together. Connection, relationship, barber pole, chest driving the swing. Everything works back together. I don't have to think about a million different positions. Thank you, Arnold Palmer, for simplifying the golf swing like this and hit the shot. That felt really good. If you can turn the barber pole, I guarantee you, you're gonna like the way you hit the golf ball. It's gonna be so much fun. All right, Segudo golfers, thank you for tuning in. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Comment below if it helped you become a better golfer. Subscribe to this channel if you want the best ball striking of your life because I'm gonna help you get there. What you're gonna find are some selections right here. We've got my online golf school, short and sweet three to five minute videos show you how to play your best golf right now. Complete golf game learning program. Subscribe right here to have the best ball striking of your life. And then check out some curated selections for you from the Segudo Golf Archives to help you play your best golf right now. I'll see you in a future episode and have a rockin' week.